Hello, everybody. Amite here, and welcome back to another episode of All the Mods 8. We are back here at the mob grinder for a quick second here. There is a mob that I want to add to this mob grinder to make my material and resource farming even better. And that is the cray, sorry, the cave creeper. I actually played around with this uh, off camera and I tried to make them spawn with a regular spawner. Apparently that just didn't work. So I'm assuming there needs to be a specific spawn condition for cave creepers, which is why I'm thinking maybe if I use this spawner specifically, the one that I put the dragon egg in, will get cave creepers. So this is the first time I'm testing it out. So I want to see if I turn this uh, thing. <gasps> yes, y I see them. It does work. So there was a specific condition. Okay, okay, okay. So why am I super excited about this? Let's just look into here. Do you see something? There's diamond, raw ore, and raw iron now. Along with stone, but nobody cares about that. So that's right. Cave creepers... Wait, where is the tab? Can drop emeralds, diamonds, iron, and gold. <laughs> Do you know how easy life just got? So I'm going to put diamonds over here in this corner to complete the full drawer of blocked uh, stuff. And then I'm also going to compress the raw iron and gold to create the blocked forms of these. I'm going to put the block of iron and block of gold here. I have a diamond, iron, and gold farm, and I don't even have to lift a single finger for it now, except for the finger to flip the lever every so often. This episode, we're going to continue upgrading our endgame gear, but instead of focusing on silent gear, we're going to focus on the second half of it, which is with the apotheosis mod. Now, there's two different things I need to do with apotheosis, but the first thing is going to be the enchanting aspect of it. I upgraded the mob farm a little bit, and instead of a shulker room, this is now my enchanting room. As of right now, it's only with normal bookshelves. And if I put a piece of gear in, the max level is 30. Now with Apotheosis, the max level you can get is like 100. But then there's all these other factors and stats that change the level of the um, enchantment and what you can get from it. So, the first step in order to upgrade this, and we can follow along by f uh, reading this handbook, is by upgrading to either Hell Shelves or Sea Shelves. So this is the reason why, in this mob grinder, I killed Guardians, because Guardians can drop puffer fish. And I also have some glass bottles here, so we can go ahead and just make a bunch of these. And we're just going to make a bunch of seashells. We're going to make as many as we can. I don't know the exact numbers, and there is a calculation that you can get. But I'm just going to go until I run out of uh, materials, essentially. And we currently have eight. So let's see what happens now if we just take away, let's just say, this side of the enchanting table. So we just put all of these in, and now if we put an item in here, preferably one that has no enchantments, it goes up to 45 now. With seashells, the maximum enchantment level you can get to is 45, so we need to get a little bit further. We need to infuse these shelves, and in order to do that, we just need to have a certain amount of stats in these, uh, wh uh, whatever it's called. And it does look like we have enough, so now is the time to finally take all the levels from the mob grinder, a whopping 456. <laughs> Holy crap. And then, of course, we also need lapis. So, we just need to infuse a couple of these. Uh, I don't know how many we need. I'm assuming we're just going to keep going until we see level 60. So, I'm just going to take these out one by one, unless they... Shoot! Oh crap, that, that's bad. We'll just grab a grindstone from here. Okay, we can get rid of it just 
the normal way. Uh, so that we cannot do this one at a time just yet, or more than one, uh, two at a time. What am I saying? It it's actually late again, but I was very excited about uh, this video because of uh, the progression I'm about to make from this. So no, fuck. <laughs> I did it again. All right. And finally, infusion. Okay, so now they've all been infused, and we can now check what our level is. So right now, we're at level 52, and now you can see enchantments that are normally, that are outside of vanilla Minecraft, like I'm breaking four now. However, we're still not at level 60 yet, so we need to craft a few more bookshelves and infuse them again. So Quanta, if you hover over it, is basically the power range. So if there's a Quanta stat of, say, plus one, then that means uh, the enchantment result can either be plus one level or minus one level. And then Rectification is a stat that basically removes the negative part of quanta so that's really good and arcana is a stat that makes the rare enchantments um more common so if i basically if i put any item into an enchantment table i can find the rates of everything just by um clicking this question mark button and you can see all the percentages of uh the enchantments that you can get from uh, on a piece of equipment. So if I put my Paxel, right, then you can see, and there's a slider to choose between, like, the enchantment level. You can see the uh, chances of actually getting a particular enchantment. So, like, for example, capturing is very rare. It's 5.7%. So we, we're trying to get this all the way to 100 slash 200 because that's what we can get it up to. So now that I have enough bookshelves, I can enchant all of these without needing to do it one at a time anymore. So we're just going to put all of these here, and then this last one will also infuse. And now we can check where we are at level-wise. We're still at 54. And that makes sense, because if you look, the max Eterna on an infused sea shelf is 54. So we need a way to raise the cap even more. And the answer to that is a crystalline sea shelf. So let's see what we need. So we need an infused sea shelf and prismarine crystals. So let's go ahead and knock these two out. And again, you can math this out. I just cannot remember for the life of me the exact numbers you need for uh, the shelf because I've done it twice now and it was kind of a pain to be very meticulous and frugal with it so this time around let's just throw caution to the wind and just make it up as we go it's also cool because when you upgrade the shelves and make different shelves you can see uh, the different designs on them and i always found them really really cute we have to go into the deep dark and this is why i've been holding it off because i absolutely did not think i could take on a warden with uh vanilla equips and half-assed enchantments so now that i have at least the base uh creations of my silent gear it will be a lot more comfortable so we're gonna go ahead and head over to the deep dark now if i can still remember where it is oh yeah we're back at this place i'm a lot stronger now so i am not as afraid of accidentally spawning a warden or anything but uh we still need to actually Spawn a warden anyways, and also do a couple, collect a couple of things. We do have to collect some skulk sensors and some catalysts, so I will be specifically looking for these, but we are going to essentially pilfer our way through this entire uh, city and see what good stuff we can get. Look at all these chests with potentially good stuff in them. Look at all the traps they've set on... No good. We don't like that. All right, what's in here? Enchanted golden apple. Whoa, hello. Oh, and some swift sneak. Oh, I like this. There's an echo shard. I believe we need that for apotheosis as well. I am going to take this though. And more importantly, from these chests, I'm hoping to find maybe some mending books or something like that. We're going to need that for our end game gear. Oh, I hear a warden. Oh, there's one. Okay, so now let's see how fast I can kill this guy. Ow. 
Ooh. I am taking damage. My question is how come he's not dying? <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna die, shit. Okay. So, uh... I'm not as strong as I thought I was. My weapons definitely need a lot more work. <laughs> Let's be a little bit more careful this- Oh, well, I spawned another one. If we get in danger, we can just fly away. But if we spam enough, we'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Surely enough, that's like, that's it. <laughs> no more. Over here is, well, this is some fun stuff. I was gonna check it out, but after fighting the warden and realizing, eh, I do take damage, maybe, just maybe we'll come back in just a little bit. I do think I can do this right away though. We just have to break all this skulk. If we do this, this will clear it up. And if we right click with it, we activate a portal. I am not going to go there just yet. All right, we can start making these dormant deep shelves. We'll just make, oh, one, two, oh, let's put them all in here. Uh, again, like I said, we'll just guesstimate. So we'll m probably make, so let's make 16 for now. Currently we are at level 59, which is not enough. We'll make one more crystalline sea shelf and see if that will push it up to 60 here. So right now it's stuck at 59 for some reason. Hmm. Let's try one more here and see if that will do the trick. Oh, wait, no, we got our 60, but it's only giving soul bound. Oh, wait, okay, I forgot about this part. This is something that's new. When I did all this Apotheosis stuff, I did this in like Automod 6 or 7, and they didn't have uh, deep, the deep dark at that point, so they... You just went from C shelf to N shelf immediately, but yeah, I forgot they made it so that you actually have to have specific stats to make disenchantment happen. So we need at least 40% quanta and we need at least 40% uh, arcana. Currently our stats are 31 and 22 for that. So now we basically have to go bookshelf shopping and sort of find where we can f get these sorts of uh, stats. We can certainly just make this work by just crafting more crystalline seashells and i think i'm inclined to do that actually just because i really don't want to use the nether related shelves because they require potions of regeneration all right every single shelf is now a crystalline sea shelf so let's take a look at the total stats of this enchanting table now we are at 30 quanta's at 79 but arcana is at 32 percent uh-oh, we need another 8% of Arcana. What we can do, and I don't know if I have any of these, is we can make a Heart Forge Sea Shelf. I'm gonna check here. Uh, on, hmm. I think I specifically put away some weird stuff around the house, so hopefully just maybe in the miscellaneous. Oh, yes! Oh, ho, ho, ho. I found one. We go back here to infuse it. Then we just take this and we make this. Now we can start infusing these. To get into the final tier of bookshelves, uh, we need a infused dragon's breath, uh, which means we have to get to level 80 and we have to do this with these certain stats. And again, this is where the rest of all these um, shelves start getting into play here to raise the eternal level to the amount it takes to get level 80 enchant which is uh 40 we need to make either the echoing skulk shelf or the soul touched skulk shelf i choose to make the soul touched skulk shelf we'll make a soul touched one and then upgrade it to here so this is from the warden which is why we had to kill uh the warden now let's see what our stats is if we get to here so 35 eterna uh, i'm gonna be a little bit lazy here and i'm just going to add the bookshelves like so there we go so now we have eterna 40. however like i was saying we need a way to make it so that we bring our quanta down so we need to kind of adjust accordingly 
So first of all, we're going to try and uh, remove as much as we can without getting the 40 Eterna. So I'm going to start by getting rid of as many seashells as possible. Okay, so that doesn't help. So we'll bring this back, 50 to 40. Well, this brings it to 97. There exists a thing called the melon shelf, and this is probably the thing I abuse the most. And to make it a melon shelf is actually not that hard. And this was also part of the reason why I wanted to do melon power in this playthrough. So how many are of these are we gonna make? I think we're gonna, hmm. Honestly, I got no clue. Let's just make six for now. So let's see what our stats are now. So we're still at 57 here. I really don't like... Maybe I should have picked a different skulk shelf, though. The problem is I need candles, and I forgot how to make a candle. Oh, you could do this with animal fat? Let's, uh... Let's just make an easy... Oh. I have animal fat, too. Do I have enough to just... Oh! So now we're at 47. Now we're at 52, so that's not good enough yet. So we'll just keep replacing shelves until we get to that magic number. This does mean I have to craft more melon shelves, though. Replacing all the seashells with deep shelves and keeping the hard forged sea hard. Sorry, this is hard to say. Hard forged seashells. That's a whole tw tongue twister in itself. Uh, we get down to forty and thirty-five. Uh, so I think if we add one more melon shelf, that brings it down perfectly. So now I, if I saved any dragon's breaths, oh, I saved. What are you kidding me? We can test this out here. So will this be enough to infuse it? Yes, it will. That means with this setup, we're able to get into the final tier of enchanting with Apotheosis. Activate an inactive dragon egg while using Dragon's Breath. Why am I getting random achievements going off here? I got my glass bottles. We're gonna try and get maybe three stacks. The best way to do this, I've learn is actually to turn on hitboxes so that you can actually see the breath and of course every so often if you accidentally right click air in the end you get this sort of item from botania really annoying but yeah i'm just gonna sit here and let the dragon attack me and i'm just gonna bottle up a bunch of dragon's breaths and then we'll continue again with uh Enchanting with apotheosis. All right, I think I've collected enough. Let's go and kill the ender dragon And since I got the jetpack and uh, the new silent gear stuff I want to kill it with just this alone just fly with it and sort of like Just wail at it. <laughs> we don't have to wait for it to perch or anything. We can just straight up kill the dragon again The egg also came back. Let's go ahead and uh, claim that as well that is weird though. I did not think that we would get a second dragon egg. So that means if I want to make a bunch of broken spawners, I could just resummon the dragon. All right, let's go infuse our stuff now. Oh, that was loud. I think uh, what we'll do is we'll make say like 30 of these for the time being. We need a draconic end shelf, which gets our Eterna to 50, uh, which is why in the episode where I was in the end, I specifically looked for a dragon head. And then we need pearlescent end shelves to basically make it so that we have a whole bunch of good stats. Let's just go ahead and make say like 16 for now. Uh, 17 accidentally uh, well since we're accidentally making stuff we might as well make it 18 the important thing is the first one we have to make is the draconic end shelf so that we can get to level 100 and then pearlescence let's do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten let's just do 16 that will be already more than enough for every single max stat. The quanta is at 100%. This can either end up as a level 200 enchantment or a level zero. So we need rectification. The shelf that uh, saves rectification the best is these guys. So here's the hoping in the time it took to edit 
and uh, record this episode. My home has farmed enough honey essence. I've it has to be enough. There's no way that it's not enough. Yeah, easy. Okay. So what was I worried about? Finally, I'm gonna have everything ready now. Uh, so I definitely think I did way too many honeycombs. We have these. So now we have to upgrade them to these. And then with that, we just upgrade one more time to these. And that's it. With these final bookshelves, if we need something super rare now, we can scale, also we can scale this up to 200. We can look at something that's say very rare, Silk Touch. Silk Touch is 10% now. If we remove, say for example, everything, but say just this, and we check out the percentage of Silk Touch, it's 2%. So Arcana can be a good thing, but sometimes it's actually not a good thing. If you want something common, say like efficiency or sharpness on a sword, it's actually pretty difficult to get. So you might have to, you know, play around with it and move stuff around here and there just so that you are able to uh, get the stats that you need to get the enchantments that you need. We still have a little bit more to go. We need to create what's called the enchantment library. Uh, we can just use the deep shows we made from uh, earlier to make this thing. Apotheosis also allows you to craft uh, things called tomes. So a really funny thing that Apotheosis added is the ability to crush enchanted stuff with anvils and they also made it so that you can make books that accept very specific um, enchantments. So a minor tome will only give you these enchantments. All we gotta do is just enchant something. And one of the things that they made it so that it's not super OP is that uh, they added a thing called life mending. So if you put that on a piece of equipment, it actually just eats away your hearts. And so it's not a desirable... Um, enchantment to have but with an anvil you can just take a book like this oh is my oh my magnus was on sorry let's try again so if we throw this here and drop an anvil oh guess what all of the enchantments get separated into separate books and then on top of that if i take this enchantment library i can just store all of these enchantments into whatever I want. So if I want to take it back out, I could just do that. So now all that's really missing is for me to just spam the crap out of this and just create a million different kinds of books until I get all the uh, enchantments that I want. We technically don't even need to drop an anvil anymore uh, because of the enchantment library, because once you put a book into the enchantment library it just divides everything up so if we want to create more books we can just take a uh, enchantment we don't like like for example a teleport and then we can just extract each and every one of them by itself to create more books which then can be made to create more tomes so the only thing that's really a limiting factor in uh making tomes is blaze rods. The recipe for every single tome requires a blaze rod in some way, shape, or form, but that's precisely why a blaze spawner is very important when uh, making this mob grinder. What's also really useful about the enchantment library is that the level that you can pull out is the highest level that you put in. So for example, right, magic protection can go up to 9, but over here I have an 8, which means I, the highest thing I put in was an 8. But if I just take out two 8s from the enchantment library and go to a anvil and make it into a 9, now I can just pull a level 9 without using uh, a previous anvil use for the calculation for how many levels it's going to cost in the anvil. I don't know how long this episode has been. It certainly feels like it's been past 30 minutes. We'll see if I'm correct uh, when I get to editing. But we still are not done yet. I need to get mending. Between running around dungeons and trying to find items with the mending enchantment on or just re-rolling a library uh, villager over and 
over again until I get it. I think I would rather choose the librarian. There's an item from Utility X I want to use, the Mob Yoinker. We just got to find one, and I'm pretty sure with how long I've been playing on this world, all the villagers around here are dead. So we'll be lucky if we find one. There's got to be like one survivor at least, right? Oh, hello. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're just gonna yoink you then. It feels kind of cruel, but should we just do this in the bathroom? <laughs> Let it be that the first trade we get is mending, please. That's all I beg for, and then they'll save me all the time. No, get back here. Where are you going? Why are you attracted to that part of my house? Moment of truth. What's our first trade gonna be? Silk touch. Respectable, but I do not like that. There's a cycle trades button. Oh, this is new. I actually never saw this before. We can... Oh, this is so good. Oh, mending. Oh, and I got it for 10 emeralds. That's one of the lowest prices I can actually get for that. Okay, we have to lock that in. I don't have emeralds on me, but we can access my... Uh, yeah, we can just access my storage from here, and I do have the books somewhere as well. Let's lock this in really quick here. And this is our final result. It's pretty crazy. Let's go, uh, test this out real quick. Let's just pick, I don't know. Let's say this pillar right here. So this is, like, the typical instamine speed, right? But if I go to, say, these iron bars... These are also insta-mine. Let's find some ores. These are also insta-mine. As everything is an insta-mine, it's not really a good way to gauge how fast m my tools are. So I brought some obsidian just to sort of show. We'll just make a layer of these and I'm just gonna hold left click to show how fast they can mine right now. So here we go. Not bad, right? What I need to do now is just collect all the enchantments I need for all of my weapons and tools, and then we'll continue from there. This one's a big one. I'm working on my weapons now. Look at the mob grinder. It's fast, but it's not fast enough, which is why I'm working on the katana first, even though my uh, dagger is my main farming uh, weapon, and I'm gonna show you why. We're going to take this, take this, and we'll also give it a name. Oh, it's a katana, so I feel like I should make it super edgy or something really weeby. Let's call it... <laughs> I know exactly what to call it. All right. So, look at this baby right here. The enchantment list is so long, you can't even... It goes beyond the game window. And if you look at the very top, though, uh, we have 36 damage. Uh, at base level and just enchantments. Again, this isn't in its final form, but I just wanted to point out where it's at currently. Uh, so when we compare stuff, we can uh, have something along the lines of that to uh, look at. Now, the reason why I'd had to do this sword first was because this will actually make our grinding a lot faster. Knowledge of the Ages 3 in its description says, enemy drops are directly converted to experience. And then Scavenger 3 says mobs may drop their loot table twice. So if I swing my sword... Yeah, I'm just getting levels way quicker than the mob grinder can keep up. And now we have all the means necessary to get our enchantments done for the rest of our gear really, really quickly now. Doing it that way though is really awkward. So instead what I did is I rehooked up my redstone uh, into this lever to turn all the mob monsters on or off. So on and off. And so when they're off, I don't have to worry about getting, you know, hacked by Sharpness 10. And that way I can just sort of stand on the mob mashers and go to town on uh, farming XP. And then once I'm done, I can just flip this back on and everything will die. Right? Yeah, of course, since I have Illagers in there, I do get Bad Omen, and I totally forgot about that, which is why I have a level 3 hero of the village. Uh, so I also made a second cow in a jar, so whenever I'm done doing that, I can just... Uh, oh, 
I can just sort of take a milk bucket and get rid of all my uh, debuffs and buffs. It's a little jank, I know, but uh, it will do. One final thing I'm going to add about Apotheosis enchantments is that it you can actually double up on two types of sharpness or damage uh, enchantments. So sharpness can go with some other uh, enchantment, and I'm choosing smite. Uh, Smite can go up to level, uh, 10. Combine these two, we make nines, and then combine these two, we make a 10. And then all I have to do is add this to the sword, and now you can see at the top there's sharpness 9, and at the bottom there's sharpness 10 as well. There's not really another damage type that I would like to double up on. Uh, Bane of Arthropods is whatever. Vigilante is too niche. Raider's Bane as well, that one's just whatever. So the usual pairing I like to go with is sharpness and smite. We are currently in my creative world where I test builds and stuff around uh, this mod pack and I'm a little frustrated because I'm currently enchanting my armor, right? And in Apotheosis, uh, you saw with my swords and daggers that I can have sharpness and another enchantment on it. And you're supposed to be able to do it with protection as well. But for some reason, I have a diamond helmet with protection 8, and then here I have a projectile uh, protection 11. But if I try to put it on the helmet, it won't work. And I have no idea what's going on with there, because I tried something else as well. I tried magic protection, I tried combining a, pro a projectile and magic protection together, none of it worked. I looked into the apotheosis config, and there was nothing that, like, disabled that. So I don't know what happened there. And so if anyone knows how to fix this, that would be great. Or if it was intentional, it would be nice to know that. All right, so after a few hours, I hate to admit it, yes, it took that long, of enchanting, I finally have all of my tools completed with an asterisk because I still am missing a couple of things I want to craft, but that can be a bridge we can cross next time. But I want to show off my armor pieces and tools, so let's take a look here. So here's my helmet, lots of stuff here, I'm not going to explain everything, but uh... It's just so much. Here's my uh, chest piece, my leggings, my boots. Here's my two paxels. Here's my two weapons. Uh, that goes right off the thing, but you can barely see it. Sharpness is the first enchantment I have there. Okay. And then here's an axe. And that's it for now. So very, very strong. We can go and... Uh, try this out somewhere. Now, yeah, you can see I have green hearts now because of the vitality enchantment on the chest piece. So let's find just someone to hit. Uh, so boom, and there we go. There's a bunch of loot that I was looking for. It's doing a lot of damage, both of my weapons, but we can do even better. So next episode, I'm going to continue working on upgrading my gear. We're almost done. I know I apologize if this is taking too long, but I promise you the pale is so worth it. And we're going to build some pretty cool farms in, uh, in the process too. So I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>